Hey, welcome to the Woods fans. It's Melissa. Today I'm going to show you how I removed the popcorn ceilings in this kitchen. I'm starting a makeover in the lake house we recently bought. And if you missed the video explaining all about that, then click in the cards or in the description below. The first thing to do is to take a sample of your ceiling and mail it in to a lab to get tested for asbestos. A lot of times popcorn ceilings have asbestos and it's unsafe to remove them. Mine, fortunately, came back negative for asbestos, but it also came back showing that 10% of the material I sent in was paint, which told me that my popcorn ceilings had been painted. Now this poses kind of a problem, and you'll see as the video goes on how much more difficult it is to remove popcorn ceilings with paint. So I'll show you some of the options you have if this is your case. Here you'll see I'm removing any obstructions in the ceiling. I had a hook to remove, and then of course the light fixture. I highly recommend doing substantial prep work before you start scraping and spraying. Now I had just a big plastic sheet that I decided to tape up with painter's tape. This is kind of the poor man's version because I didn't want to run to the store. Ideally I would have plasticed off every wall and even the floor because this is such a messy job. And you can get plastic that has an edge on it that's sticky so all you have to do is just unroll the plastic and then it sticks right up to the edge of the wall. Popcorn ceilings remove much easier if they're wet. So I'm using my garden sprayer and I'm going to fill it with hot water and I'm also going to add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. What this does is it seriously prevents the textured ceiling from turning to a crumbly dust. It keeps particles from the ceiling from getting all over the place and the Dawn dish soap kind of holds it all together so it comes off in clumps. After the sprayer was pressurized, you want to spray a small area that you're going to scrape. I sprayed this area and then let it sit for five minutes while I prepared myself, kind of covering my face and my hair and everything. You want to make sure that you allow the water to soak into the texture before you try to scrape. So besides tying my hair back, I also decided to wear a respirator because there was a part of me that was kind of shocked when the asbestos test came back negative. And so I don't know, I wasn't really trusting that there isn't something dangerous in this ceiling texture, especially since the house is so old, built in the 50s. So I just decided to do this. It's better to be safe than sorry. And then I put my hood up to protect my hair because with that stuff that you're scraping off all wet, it kind of gets globby and it can get on everything. And I also put on safety glasses so that nothing gets in my eye. All right, so now I put some more water on there just right before I'm going to scrape it make sure that the texture is nice and wet and then I'm going to come in with a six inch metal drywall knife and try to scrape. It wasn't working super well. It was getting off a lot of like the big chunks but it wasn't coming off all the way and so what I decided to do was use more and more water and mind you hot water does work better so my water was steaming hot. When I was done with that section this is what it looks like. There's the popcorn where I haven't scraped and where I've scraped you can see that I just basically knocked down the top of each ridge. So it's looking flatter but it's not quite what I was expecting. So I decided to spray it down again and just really douse it with water. I had never removed a popcorn ceiling before. I had just basically watched a bunch of tutorials on it. So some of this was trial and error. And I thought if I got it really, really wet, I could even soak through what I'm presuming was like a paint layer holding the texture onto the drywall. I also started spraying another area to prep it just to get it soaking before I moved on. The area that I doused again and again where I originally started, I was able to get up the layer of paint and get everything scraped down to the drywall. But because I had to get it so wet to accomplish this, the drywall started gouging. It was almost impossible for me to not scrape up the drywall because how moist the ceiling was, it compromised the actual drywall itself. And so I would not recommend doing this, honestly, because it was also a massive arm workout and very, very time consuming. So I don't think that I realistically could have done the whole ceiling scraped off all this way. As I got going into this project, I also wanted to try out this idea I saw online. You take a shop vac and you remove your fine particles filter so that it's ready to accept a wet material. 
So this is my fine particles filter. You can see I was doing drywall last, but basically you remove that. You keep your other like foam filter on and then you duct tape your drywall knife to the end of your shop vac so that some of the stuff falling down will actually get sucked up by the shop vac and not even make it to the ground to make a mess. Now, I really should have had an attachment on the shop vac that was like wider to catch more gunk when it fell. But as I was using this, I thought it worked okay, but I noticed very quickly the major flaw with this method. And that is that your shop vac fills up with wet, heavy material very quickly. Especially when the ceiling is really full of water, it gets heavy so, so quick. And so I'm just sitting there already doing a arm workout to scrape above my head and I'm trying to hold up a you know 30 pound heavy material shop vac in my other arm. So I pretty quickly gave up on the shop vac idea and just went back to business. With the plastic on the walls I really was only making the most of the mess on the floors. I did end up moving this plastic sheet around the room as I scraped different sections of the ceiling. The edges of the ceiling, you can see it's discolored from where cabinets were once installed, and I removed those. I'll show that in another video. As I move towards the center of the ceiling, suddenly the popcorn started scraping off with ease. I was amazed at this section. I just hit it with my drywall knife and it came right down. Look at that. It was really satisfying. I'm not going to lie. And this was actually fun, this part. So if your ceiling hasn't been painted, this is how the popcorn will just scrape off. It will be this easy. And I actually would enjoy this job if the majority of the wall had been like this. What I found out was that the wall had like a 4 by 8 sheet of drywall replaced in the middle at one point, And that area was textured but not painted. So about 65% of my wall was pretty difficult with paint to scrape as flat as I could and then the rest was very easy because it was this patched piece and it scraped flat with very little effort. I don't know what is more satisfying watching popcorn texture get scraped off or watching a painter's tape peel. At about halfway through the ceiling I wanted to show you the mess all over the floor and the stand I was using Thankfully, the plastic did help quite a bit, but I still had quite a bit more mess to make. So be sure you're definitely wearing gross clothes and you have a plan to clean up afterwards. Fortunately, I'm also going to be replacing these floors, so I wasn't too worried about wrecking them. I got tons of this all over my outfit and my shoes. Thankfully, I was wearing Uggs. As I really got into the ceiling, this is how I ended up doing it. I liked working with the 6 inch drywall knife instead of a bigger one because I felt like I really had more control and could get more leverage on it. I used two hands and scraped hard across the popcorn that had been painted and wasn't coming off easily until it was scraped mostly flat. There is still texture there and because I had the patched area, I really had no choice but to try and skim coat. So here you'll see that I'm priming the ceiling. I'm doing a primer because I know that like the older paint might be oil based and I wanted to make sure that my skim coat is going to stick to the ceiling. Again, I'd rather be safe than sorry, although the skim coat product I'm using does adhere to most surfaces and you wouldn't necessarily have to prime if you were doing this project. Now if I didn't have the patch, I probably would have just painted the ceiling and left it with the mostly knocked down popcorn texture because after scraping it got fairly flat. I'll show you what it looks like in a close-up here. However, because I had the patch where it was totally flat, I thought the two textures looked strange after I applied a layer of primer, and therefore I'm going to skim coat with this awesome texture medium I'll tell you about in a little bit. Um, I also came across with a paintbrush to do all the edges, just made sure everything was primed and ready to accept the next product. Oh, by the way, the primer I used is the Zinzer Bin 123. So now it's dry. You can see here I'm, I'm touching it and filling for any raised spots. I'm going to use this Texture Effects by Modern Masters. This is a Rust-Oleum brand, 
and you can see it's kind of fluffy like joint compound and I'm going to be using it like some people might use joint compound for a skim coat. However, it is better in numerous ways. Initially, I tried to just like smear it on straight out of the can. Not really sure like what coverage would end up like, but this ended up being too dry and not applying thin enough. This was also kind of a wrist workout because the product takes some effort to smear. So instead, I added some hot water, just a little bit to thin it out, mix it up in my trough, and this was perfect for my skim coat. With the water mixed in, this product applied very smoothly. It was super nice uh, to just basically bring across the little bumps that were left over after trying to scrape the painted popcorn and to get everything smooth. Now, this product applies, like you can see, troweled on almost like plaster and when it dries it looks like that if you're going for a totally flat ceiling you could take a wet sponge shortly after applying it maybe letting it dry like 10 15 minutes and move it slowly across to flatten but i actually ended up loving the way that the troweled on look it had some movement and really mimicked a plaster ceiling the huge advantage that this has over using drywall compound to skim coat is that it is way, way more crack and shrink resistant. You know that joint compound cracks so easily and this stuff won't, especially if you're applying a thin layer like I am. Now because I had the water in there to thin it out, it definitely was a little bit messy, sometimes dropping little globs onto the floor or onto my outfit again but I just wore a hat to protect myself and it really wasn't too bad. I got the hang of being able to move it around without making a big mess. At the end of this, I kind of felt like, like a plaster, you know? <laughs> but I will say people who do this for a living, man, they have really strong arms and necks. My neck was really sore after doing this on the ceiling. It took me like six hours to do the whole thing. Like I said, I probably wouldn't have done the work of skim coating if the ceiling had been one continuous texture but since I had some spots that had little bumps and then that area that was like scraped perfectly flat I knew that I had to do a skim coat no matter what to get the look that I wanted. The Modern Masters Texture Effects is also self-sealing so even though it took me all this time to apply it um, I didn't have to paint afterwards or do any finish work because it's already water resistant itself I could just put it on and it's good to go. You can actually tint this stuff, this texture medium to whatever color if you wanted a colored ceiling. I didn't get mine tinted because I just wanted white. I didn't need to wear a mask with this because the VOCs are extremely low and it had basically no odor. I took this close up before finishing the ceiling just so you can see the texture that I'm covering. So that that is what it looks like all smooth and up above on the top. That is the little bumpy ridges that were left after scraping the painted popcorn. So once the texture effects was all dry and looking beautiful, I was ready to install my new light fixture. I went up there and I got this new thing all hooked in. It's a brushed gold finish. I'm going to be doing lots of gold and copper finishes in this kitchen when it's all said and done. But this is really the first project that I completed in the room, so the rest of it still looks pretty bad, not gonna lie. The after on this video is not very beautiful, but I hope that I did teach you guys something about removing popcorn ceilings, especially if you have the issue of having ones that have been painted. I know that that can be really challenging, but hopefully watching my process of just scraping it mostly flat and then choosing to paint or skim coat will help you in tackling your DIY home project. Thank you, thank you for watching. Welcome to the woods. I hope if you like this video, you'll consider subscribing. And if you wanna follow behind the scenes of me working on this home remodel, then be sure to follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description below. We will catch you again next week on Welcome to the Woods.